The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Pickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Friday morning, January 7th. We got non-farm payrolls numbers. You're looking at 199,000. Unemployment rate, how about 3.9%? Who had 3.9% a year ago for the unemployment rate ticking on January 7th of 2022? But nonetheless, that's what we get. We got some wage increases in there as well. 0.6% month over month, beating the 0.4% number. You jump over to the markets. Excuse me, a little bit of negative action to kick things off from 4,700, the first spike in the S&Ps. You make it down to 4,670. Since then, we've spiked a bit. I'm going to go back to one-minute charts so you can really see the breakdown over about the last 37 minutes since we got that non-farm payroll number. You dive down to 4,670. Since then, we're right back to where we were at about 10 till 9 this morning. NASDAQ 100, some volatility on the growth sector in a big way. You're negative by 48 points right now. We've clawed back. You're talking about almost 100 points of the 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 losses that we had you were down to a low in the nasdaq 100 of 15,624 we're 90 points above that level at 15,714 all things considered we're only about 45 points off of where you were trading at coming into that non-farm payrolls number all the markets in the red you got the dow right now now third negative 35 points also catching a bit of a bounce dow not too much action when you look at even from high to low not even 200 points you actually spiked higher originally in the dow russell negative by one point right now above 2200 how about bitcoin watch out below folks uh there's some volatility for, wait back it up there's some volatility for you on bitcoin from 42,600. really remarkable that bitcoin trades so well with the market now uh the correlation between bitcoin and the major market indices pretty remarkable to see on a consistent basis at this point you're talking about under 42,000 now you put bitcoin on a daily Pretty remarkable, right? I've been talking about for a while. Once you breach that 618, you gap below that level, probably going to come back right to about 40,000. If you're looking for a buy point in Bitcoin, could be a point that you dabble a little bit. We were just trading at 70,000 less than two months ago, uh, coming just above those highs we got back in April. You're trading 41,480 in Bitcoin right now. We jump over to Ethereum, staying in the crypto sector. You're down to 3,181. You see, not quite back down to the lows we had in September 2722, but nonetheless, you're talking about giving up $1,800 in the price of Ethereum. Crypto getting hurt with the market. Crude. There's your daily on crude. We back it up to a 15 minute to see the volatility. Crude trading a little bit lower this morning on that number for non farm payrolls as well. Gold up about two bucks. Gold with some volatility in both directions this morning. We jump to notes and bonds, and the slide continues to lower prices and higher yield right now. Before we get over there, you're talking about on the 10 year right now, negative by six ticks to a price point of 128.10, and checking out the yield right now on the 10 year, 1.76%. Folks, we're not in five trading days into 2022, and the 10-year already added one quarter of a full point. We were sitting at 1.5 to start off the week. We are sitting now. There's your 10-year, okay? And there is a pretty magnificent move on five days, January 3rd. Pretty remarkable to back things up that we were sitting at 130.11. You were down two full points, exactly two full points. Remarkable move on the 10-year as the yields have risen from about 1.5 to 1.76% on the dot this morning. And with that, the markets continue to climb from the blow that we got this morning. Uh, let's jump over to the headline number. U.S. adds fewer jobs than forecast and the unemployment rate falls. 199,000, the increase in non-farm payrolls last month followed upward revisions in the prior two months. The unemployment rate, 3.9%. Uh, labor force participation rate unchanged. Not many people coming back into the workforce, which is part of what they thought would happen. Uh, latest unemployment, latest employment numbers, not unemployment, suggest that despite still robust demand, the factors that have kept the lid on hiring throughout the fall, you're talking about childcare, you're talking about the virus, you're talking about lack of um, 
the savings, not lack of, that people have. Uh, it is persisting. 199,000 is the jobs number down there. Yeah, so market looking for at least an 80% chance that the Fed starts hooking in March. Check that out, right? Average hourly earnings. Here's where we talk about wages and inflation. Up 0.6% in December. 4.7% from a year earlier. Both of those just above what economists were looking for. Last month's jobs gain, which capped the biggest annual payrolls advance on record. Uh, yeah, 450,000 was the number. The unemployment rate was projected to fall to 4.1%. When you break it down to where they were, tough one here for leisure and hospitality. The moderate advance in December, led by leisure and hospitality, but you're only talking about 53,000. I mean, we just got ADP private payrolls on Wednesday. They had big numbers across the board there. Not so much when you look at the non-farm payrolls. Professional and business service employment rose while retail trade payrolls declined. Now, what's interesting is when you talk about retail, okay, retail trade payrolls declined. Seasonal adjustments is a big part. Here we go. The report also includes routine revisions to the seasonally adjusted household survey data over the past five years. Okay, that's not seasonally adjusted retail data, folks. Because you're in the holiday season, you're making seasonal adjustments. They actually hired. Okay, but when you adjust for the season, they were actually decreases. That's where you get to tweak the numbers a bit that can skew things. Uh, maybe that's pointing to the fact that this holiday season was not like other holiday seasons. You're getting a lot more online orders. Maybe you don't have to order as many, um, hire as many people for in stores. You probably have to still hire people for warehouse and deliveries. Um, speaking of Amazon in particular. But nonetheless, you see the market reaction. Uh, if anything, the wage data, 0.6% month over month. Unemployment data at 3.9%. I mean, what's the Fed waiting for, right? You have an unemployment rate at 3.9% and you have inflation at 0.6% on a month over month basis, folks. If you carry 0.6% over 12 months, you're talking about greater than 7% inflation. We're gonna get CPI data next week. What are they looking for? They're looking for about 7% on the CPI front. All of that in mind, unemployment under 4%, what's the Fed looking for for maximum employment? You're probably getting to that arena. So if you have maximum employment and you have an inflation that is still coming in hotter than expected, what's that mean? That means that the impetus is for the Fed to potentially hike faster. What is the risk? When you look at is the risk that they're going to hike faster or is the risk that they're going to hike slower? We have an unemployment rate at 3.9% and we have inflation still running hot. We have wages running 0.6% month over month and we have CPI data that's supposed to come in at 7%. Add it all up, folks. Rate hikes are coming. The market's paying attention. The 10-year just added a quarter basis point in the span of five trading days to kick off 22. Uh, 2022, the market not messing around to kick off the year, folks. Uh, it is going to be quite a transition from free money and stimulus aplenty to no stimulus and less free money. I mean, we're still going to be talking about a pretty accommodative interest rate coming off zero. But when you're literally used to zero, it is a different story. And we're seeing that play out. Markets, though, not too freaked out. I think they kind of figured this out uh, in terms of what was coming down the line with the Fed minutes. NASDAQ 100 negative by 38 points right now. You got the S&Ps negative by four. We'll be coming right back, folks. We'll be talking to our, uh, oh, no, we don't get a chance to talk to Kevin Hicks today. That's too bad. We'll talk to him Tuesday. We talk to him Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Still, check out Fast Market at 12 o'clock. Love that program. I'm sure they'll have a good program going on today. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets clawing back the losses right now. We got about 12 minutes to go until the opening bell, and we might be green across the board by then. We got the S&Ps now negative by just one point. You're 16 points off the low this morning. NASDAQ 100 surging. You're talking about 125 points off the low, negative by just nine right now. The Dow, a little bit of a laggard. You're still negative by about 51 points right now. The Russell, negative by one. We jump over to the commodities. You got gold a little bit higher, up $4 as well. Crude trading at 79.46, and we jump back to the all-important notes and bonds, and they're getting, catching a little bit of a pop, too. Uh, we were just at a yield of 1.76%, folks. You are now at a yield of 1.743. Two basis points in two minutes is quite a move in the 10-year. I'm exaggerating a bit, but you get the point. Uh, jumping around to some of the FANG stocks. Let's see how they are reacting this morning. We'll kick it off with Amazon. Amazon, now Amazon's a little bit of a different animal versus the growth companies like Microsoft, Apple's definitely its own animal at this point. Um, boy, you get into some of the software makers or the big time multiple growth companies, they have gotten punished in a big way over the last five trading days. Amazon, 32.76, you're basically flat on the session. I talked about Microsoft. They did a great discussion on Microsoft yesterday on Fast Market. Microsoft trading at 315, you were as low as 311, so you're going to open barely positive for Microsoft shares. Now, interesting, right? You got Microsoft up a dollar from the close of yesterday, still got the NASDAQ 100 in the negative. Let's jump over to Tesla. Tesla, you could say that's their own animal as well. Uh, Tesla up about $8 in the pre-market. Google shares, Alphabet. Basically flat so far this morning. We jumped to Meta shares. Meta, quite a day yesterday to the upside for Facebook. Look at that acceleration before pulling back a bit to end the day. Facebook shares is going to be in the positive by a bit as well. We jump around to some of the travel stocks. American Airlines barely in the positive this morning. You got Delta barely in the positive as well. The cruise ships. Yeah, Norwegian barely in the positive as well as they skip around. Let's jump around to some of the cannabis stocks. Man, these stocks. How about a seven handle on Canopy yesterday? A seven handle. 796, man. These, the demise of these stocks, man, remarkable. Uh, did not believe that these would get below, and I say these, talking about Canopy in particular, below $9, below the COVID lows. But sure enough, that's the case. Now, you jump over. I mean, market cap wise, no, they don't even have the company's mark, um, balance sheet because it's such a s small profile company. Yeah, I would just stay away. Eventually, 
you may find a bid there. If you want some exposure to the cannabis sector, but you don't want to touch any of these equities, Constellation. Um, quite a run this company has had. You pulled back a bit. Constellation, though, they have an interest in Canopy in a big way. I mean, look at these 382s and 618s, folks. you got to love them. Put them on your radar. Last November, Constellation is trading at 160. You accelerate up to about 245. You trade back right to a 382. You skip around on that 382 from August all the way to almost October, about a two-month basing period around that 382 period. And since then, you've taken off. Now, you've had a pullback this week with Constellation. Uh, it was just, uh, they just teamed up. What was it, yesterday? Yeah, so they came out with their earnings, I believe. Yes, they came out with their earnings yesterday. So you pull back a bit. You're getting a little bit of a haircut if you're interested to get in there. But they are a powerful alcohol company with some exposure to cannabis. Um, they have the one and only Corona beer. Uh, they also have Modelo. They have Kim Crawford wine. Uh, it's a very solid company with some exposure to cannabis. Pulling back a bit yesterday, uh, but nonetheless, quite a chart for Constellation out there. All right, jumping around to what else we have going on. Let's jump a little bit to retail. Walmart. Walmart holding up pretty well during the demise of some of these companies. You check out Walmart. I've talked about it before. We do have some Walmart in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options. If you're taking a look at Walmart, I would keep an eye on the trend line that it's got going, going all the way back to July of 20. Um, bouncing off that trend line each time it reaches it. You're trading at 143. You're only $10 off the all-time highs for Walmart. We touched that level three times. Seems like that might be where this is heading. Walmart, solid dividend company. I've talked about it many times as well. You're dealing with a company with the market cap, I think under three, under 400, yeah, $397 billion still for Walmart. Talked about it on my show yesterday. If you're talking about capital preservation, you start getting into huge multiples of growth. That's where you can really get cut in in, in big ways. Uh, if you look for capital preservation, a company like Walmart, you're dealing with strong dividend, you're dealing with you know decent multiples, and you're dealing with a company that does have an opportunity for growth. Not quite a growth company, but you look at the fact that they are servicing one out of four dollars for order online, pick up in store. Um, there's all the speculation of a bank of Walmart. Anytime you have a financial relationship with that many Americans, that many citizens of the world, uh, there's opportunity for growth. Anytime that you're touching that many customers, even if it's on the lower income spectrum of the side, there's still opportunities because, man, you talk about the bank of Walmart. One thing they keep talking about is that the people and customers that Walmart services most are underbanked in a big way. I mean, many poor uh, Americans, unfortunately, don't have bank accounts and they end up paying such a high fee to bank, whether it's, you know, you got to go get a bank check, you got to get a cashier's check, maybe you have to pay to cash your check, etc. The fees, when you do not have a bank sometimes, add up exponentially. Point being, you get the point. We're trading 10 bucks off the all-time highs. Nice trend line there for Walmart. Now, I jumped to Walmart because it's really interesting, the, the number of influences in this market. When you talk about rural America, the economy is rocking and hospitals are having to compete with the economy. It makes sense, but that is not what you wanted to see happening right now, especially with spikes going on at hospitals. U.S. hospitals struggle to match Walmart pay as staff flees Omicron. Now, I'll tell you my experience, folks. I have a fiance who's a respiratory therapist. I'm not going to talk about her company, but man, they are making a lot of money, okay? And even as a nonprofit, and some of the bonuses that were given out, some of the pay that's given out, some of the hardships they're having finding people, they could solve that problem with a little bit more money that they are not quite pushing out. Uh, but nonetheless, they're struggling because the economy is rocking and special when you get into rural hospitals serving older communities, they're at the greater risk. Uh, high demand for labor throughout the economy, making it harder to find replacements for doctors, nurses, support staff who have been sidelined by the Omicron variant. Now doctors, yeah, I imagine so. They are in high demand as always. But when you talk about other parts of the staff, of the labor squeeze, openings and quits in healthcare, uh, you got quits down here and you got openings, openings on the rise in a big way. You're talking about 1,800 openings on the rise with quits on the rise as well. And I don't blame them, folks. You know, you're sitting in the hospital and you're dealing with the fourth wave right now, the first wave, maybe the second wave. But when you're dealing with the fourth wave, um, very frustrating to see people not protecting themselves and doing their part for the vaccine, folks. And you're seeing hospitals fill up. 
with predominantly unvaccinated people. Um, the life of a respiratory therapist, doctor, nurse over the last pushing two years, pretty remarkable, uh, but did not really imagine this. But yes, it is an influence. It makes sense. Uh, you have the chief executive of a 25 bed facility in rural Nebraska. He's monitoring patients on the floors himself as they are trying to fill gaps there in the employment of those hospitals as they're trying to compete with an economy that is just uh, firing on all cylinders, to say the least. All right, folks, we got the market pretty remarkable with what we just got. I referenced to Kevin Hanks yesterday. I said, Kevin, you know, even if you told me the numbers that we're going to get, it's almost hard sometimes to imagine how the market would react. Well, if you told me that we had an unemployment rate of 3.9 percent, we had wages increasing 0.6 percent month over month. I think the estimate was 0.4 percent. Right. I said, geez, this market's probably going to be pretty worried and trade lower over the fact the Fed may hike quicker. Guess what, folks? It did at first, but we've clawed it back. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be back for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TD and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And just like that, we open flat to the tick. NASDAQ 100 was just in the green. We're negative by just three points. Market basically claws it all back down. Still slightly below where we were when we came into that non-farm payroll number. But boy, we got some volatility in both directions right now. And you talked about some volatility. Uh, how about these gambling stocks? Now, DraftKings, quite a pop yesterday. You trade from 23.21. You're up at 26 right now. You're up 8 tenths percent today. You put this chart on a longer term chart, though, and talk about uh, a pullback. From 75 bucks in March, you get cut 
by 66%, folks, to $25 today. You put this even further back for a five-year weekly. Yeah, I guess that's when they would go public. They went public in April of 2020. You almost give it all back. The full run to higher prices. Now, the reason why I'm talking about DraftKings, folks, is because it is a big weekend in the world of gambling, and it has to do with Game On Mobile Sports Betting can start in New York tomorrow. Tomorrow, folks, January 8th, 2022, New Yorkers, uh, some of the most avid gamblers out there, maybe uh, outside of those lovely gamblers in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, but yeah, legal online sports betting coming just in time for the NFL playoffs. Got to love that if you are in the gambling sector. And they loved it yesterday on DraftKings. A little bit higher today. Uh, these companies, man, still quite a pullback from the expectations they had. Now, DraftKings is a big one. You jump over to Penn. Is it Penn Gaming or Penn National? Uh, let's jump over to Analyze. I was going to have them. Yeah, Penn National Gaming. There you go. Now, I bring them up because they are the owners of Barstool Sports. But even this one, you talk about some haircuts, folks. I mean, remarkable. You are back to almost prior to the pandemic for this equity. Penn goes from three bucks during the COVID lows to 142. Geez, I hope if you had some of this equity, folks, you were taking some money off the table when you get a banger like that. You've pulled back to 47 bucks. Uh, you can see, though, things are improving rapidly. I imagine this is going to be a rapidly growing business as it expands. They're trying to get it done in Florida. They almost got it done. Uh, got overturned, I believe, by the judiciary, saying that it was not quite uh, legal and they might have a legitimate case. I mean, New Yorkers and uh, Floridians passed a constitutional amendment a couple of years ago stating that any more gambling would have to be approved by the, the, the whole state in a constitutional amendment or a state vote, at least. Um, so there's a lot of technicalities. Nonetheless, not quite happening in Florida yet. Point being, it is coming, though, and you're seeing it coming in New York and going to be wild to see. I mean, that must be pretty cool. As somebody that's an investor, a gambler, folks, if you're a short-term trader, you are a gambler, whether you, whether you want to recognize it or not. Uh, you're gambling. You're just gambling, hopefully, with a positive expectation. I mean, some of the biggest casinos in the world are gamblers. They gamble every single day when they have customers that come sit at their tables. The only thing is they're gambling on bets that have positive expectations. And most people who walk into a casino are gambling with a negative expectation. In everyone's mind, not everyone's, but in most people's mind, gambling has a negative connotation because most people gamble with a negative expected value, as in they're gambling on games that in the long run have a negative return. Well, thankfully, that's not the case in the market if you're applying some trading principles that make sense. Nonetheless, these stocks, I started putting them on my radar because it's quite a pullback in New York. They're gonna put up some big numbers and the market overall is heading in the right direction for these companies. We jump back to DraftKings, uh, up 1.3% right now. Market, negative by about four right now, 46.82 for the S&Ps. NASDAQ down about 46 points right now. Nothing too dramatic when you look at the lows we had yesterday. You're still more than 100 points off the low you had yesterday morning in the NASDAQ 100. All right, jumping around, other headlines I got up here to take a look at. Uh, let's see, what were we looking at? GameStop. Yeah, GameStop. So GameStop is getting into crypto. Surprise, surprise. And the market loves it. Surprise, surprise. You're up 17.5 percent. GameStop uh, reports that the video game retailer is starting a new division to focus on cryptocurrency partnerships and non-fungible tokens. Market says, thank you, sir. May I have another? We'll run that one up. Um, talk about a perfect combination, right? You got the ultimate meme stock, GameStop. And they're going to try and get into the NFT crypto game. I mean, if the Wall Street bets, boys and girls don't love that over there, I don't know what you love. You're up 15% today, but you've given back some of the gains. You were up to 175 when they announced that last night, uh, pulling back a bit to 150, 162 on the open right now. Pretty remarkable that any CEO, especially of a meme stock, can come out and say, hey, we just started a new division. We're going to be getting into crypto. And the market says, yeah, we love that so much. I mean, look at what's the, yeah. The, the, the market cap for this company right now is $11.5 billion. They've got 76 million shares outstanding, folks. So they just added about $1.5 billion in market cap. $1.5 billion with a B in market cap off that simple 
uh, announcement. Not sure that that one's going to hold in terms of the value there. But nonetheless, uh, T-Mobile, they report their subscribers 844,000 for the quarter, uh, 2.9 million, quite a number, almost 3 million for the entire year. Fourth quarter numbers were below consensus, though. They were looking for 868, the market a little bit lower pre-market. We jump over to T-Mobile, T-M-U-S, as the beginning of 5G rages, and you're down about 2.3%. Quite a pullback from 150. You run from 63 bucks at COVID. You come into 2020 at 82. Uh, quite a pullback, though. And let's just see out of curiosity where we're dealing with here. I mean, you're coming back to some pretty substantial levels of a pullback when you lose almost $40 off that equity. Almost at the 50%. We did actually touch the exact 50% from the whole COVID run from 63 bucks up to 150 for T-Mobile. This market's slipping a little bit. Back to the indices. You take a look at the S&P. We're kind of a critical area. On a weekly basis, bumping up against the low boundary line that we've been in since basically the COVID lows. We put this back to a five-year daily. We zoom in on the most recent action. And you can see pretty critical level as we are at about within about 10 points of that channel line. Now, you can see it's a liberal channel line, folks, because uh, you look where we were in terms of December. Okay, we had a, a channel line of about 4,600 and you traded down to 4,520. So that's 80 points outside of that channel line. But all things considered, pretty well defined. Jump over to the NASDAQ 100. We'll jump to the Qs. And there's your channel line in the Qs coming off the acceleration that began last year in late September. Really, it began when we got the vaccine efficacy in November. And you can see that we still have a little bit of ways to go, even though it just reached the bottom of that channel line. I mean, you could trade to 376 in the Qs, and you're still within a channel line that is just remarkably to the upside. Uh, and we've bounced around in this channel line many times over the last two years, almost a year and a half, you could say, to September. Right now, though, you got the Qs down another dollar seventy-two with this market trading to negative prices. We back up to the futures. And we've basically given up that whole acceleration we had. We're at 15,679 right now. Let's jump to notes and bonds and see how they're trading. Still holding up relatively well. They're holding on to that little pop that it had from 9 o'clock. Gold contract at 1790 this morning. Let's see how some of those FANG stocks, let's see how Apple in particular, Apple shares, giving it up a little bit as well. Apple was up to 173 and change. You just give up a buck 50 on Apple shares. Microsoft's been particularly volatile. Microsoft down about a third of percent right now. We jumped to Amazon shares. Positive by a third of a percent right now. Tesla trading down eight tenths percent right now. Let's see how Ford's trading. Quite a week for them. Yeah, up 1.2 percent. The run continues for Ford as they'll be pumping out some electric vehicles, F 150s. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got the markets in negative territory. Russell, though, how about that? Russell leading away in positive territory. We got a little rotation into the Russell. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets almost back in the green. Checking out the NASDAQ 100 quick, quick, real quick. We're going to go back to a one minute chart just so you can see the type of volatility, right? We traded 15,780. You trade down 100 points and you trade back up almost 100 points, folks. And that's in the span of about five to 10 minutes. Markets only been open for 12 minutes so far. To keep things in context, you get the NASDAQ 100 back in the green right now. The Russell, though, catching quite a bit. Look at that acceleration in the Russell. Pre market, you're trading at 2192 right now, 2212 in the Russell. All right, what else we got going on? Jumping over to Discovery. Discovery getting quite a pop today, up $3. That's a 12.2% move. You were higher pre market, you've accelerated into the open right now at 29 bucks. You put this thing on a daily, though, my goodness, quite a fall. The Bill Huang saga uh, really escalated this in March, 78 bucks down to 40. Since then, though, it's been a slow slide as well. Now, what they did announce here, and that was in May, I believe, was the merger between Discovery and Time Warner spinning off HBO for Warner Media. And so Bank of America out. Uh, they're upgrading Discovery to a buy from a neutral, uh, which feels that Discovery's upcoming merger with Warner Media has the potential to create a, create a global media powerhouse. Discovery added 3.8%. Yeah, 3.8%. How about 11.8% now for Discovery? You're bumping up against the highs that we had back in November, right? Right to the tick almost. You're talking about high at 2898 how about 28.99? It gets over it by a penny. You're trading at 28.72. Yeah, I mean, just from an anecdotal perspective, right? I mean, Discovery. Let's see if they still have what they control here listed. Um, I mean, an absolute plethora of brands in terms of what they have here. Yeah. So, the headline name, of course, Discovery Channel. But then you got Food Network, Animal Planet, um, Investigation Discovery, the Tra Travel Channel, Science and Motor Trend. Um, yeah, and of course they have their apps and so forth as well. Yeah, just pulling anything else. Just a plethora of brands, and they're going to combine that with HBO, Time Warner, um, to create their own company. And that's going to be happening soon, coming down the pipeline, I believe, what they say, in March that that's coming down the line? Yeah, they just say upcoming merger, so happening shortly. And what else we got? That's pretty much it going down the line for specific equities. Let's see what else we got up here. Yeah, this one. I want to get to this one. Check this one out. The number of NASDAQ stocks is down that are down 50% or more is almost at a record. 40%. 40. Four out of 10 NASDAQ stocks in the index have fallen by half from one year highs. That is staggering. If you ask people, uh, even people in the market, now if you're studying, studying market breadth, right, I, I imagine you have some idea that there's been some real pullbacks in the in specific equities. I've been talking about some of them, uh, the gambling stocks, the Zooms of the world, the DocuSigns of the world. 
40% of the index though, my goodness, investors are selling first, figuring out the rest later. Roughly four in every 10 companies on the NASDAQ comp index have seen their market values cut in half from their 52 week highs. Uh, while the majority of age members are mirrored in bear markets. And what, what do we have though? We have the NASDAQ 100 sitting right near record highs when you look at the index. Um, I mean, take a look, already in the top 13% of all days since 1999. Now, this is pointing to, okay, percentage of stocks down 50% from a 52-week high. You see the COVID spike that we had in there. During the COVID spike, you only had 60%. We're at 40%. And then you look at the composite index. Let's expand it to make it crystal clear. You can't even see a pullback on the index. Meanwhile, you got 40%. I mean, yeah, you look at 2008, 2009, whew, that, that market just got pummeled. 2000 got pummeled as well. But you see pullbacks during those times, all right? Even during COVID, you see the pullback here. There is no pullback that correlates to the spike here at all. Even the spike in 2016, okay, there's your pullback. Not as substantial as some of the pullbacks we've received. But boy, if you start seeing some of these big tech companies faltering, and I'm not saying you are, but if you're trading the NASDAQ 100, you better be keeping your eye on Apple, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Tesla, Netflix, uh, all the likes of it. I mean, let's just jump over to the market watch and jump over to the NASDAQ 100. Uh, the big names are the ones you got to watch, folks. Microsoft, Apple, Google, Facebook, Tesla, and Amazon. That's basically it. Those are the ones that have been carrying the the market and really remarkable that Amazon just been in a consolidation for the better part of a while. Meanwhile, the other companies, indeed, Apple, $2.83 trillion. They're $170 billion off $3 billion, off $3 trillion already. This market, I keep saying it, we got a two-way market in a big way, folks. You're seeing it play out this morning. NASDAQ 100, right back up to where we were at 7 this morning, 15783 I mean, you have popped 150 points in the NASDAQ 100. You got the NASDAQ 100 positive. You have the S&Ps. Now a solid 20 points off of the lows you had. You're actually above where we came into the non-farm payrolls on the S&Ps. Let's see how we're doing on commodities. Crude gives it up a little bit to 79.20, but that's been on quite a tear. Gold turning at about 17.91. And notes and bonds uh, retracing a bit. You're talking about a yield right now. We're probably pushing 1.75 exactly. Let's pull it up. Yeah, you're talking about a yield, 1.757, so close to 1.76%. Over in Europe right now, you get the DAX down about a half a percent, FTSE positive by two tenths percent. We jump over to the VIX this morning, volatility index, back under 20, 1939, quite the spike on Wednesday, got an elevated number on Thursday early on the sell-off to 2106, trading at 1939. All things considered though, when you look at the recent spikes we've had, this is a weekly, okay, just zooming in on the action. For the run that we have had in the markets this week, folks, that does not even stand out on the VIX, which is remarkable. If you think this is a worst case scenario, keep your eye on the fact that the VIX has not even spiked, okay? You want to spike, you go back to November 29th when the market sold off post Thanksgiving over the first Omicron fears. fears. Uh, even December 20th, you got a spike to 2750. We put this back going back 20 days. That's what a spike looks like in the market, folks. Not this, which is remarkable. Now, the important thing to remember about the VIX is the VIX is predicated off the S&P. It is not predicated off the NASDAQ 100, okay? It's predicated off the S&P. We're sitting about 100 points from all-time highs in the S&P. We're basically just back to prices we were trading at December 22nd in the S&P, all things considered. Uh, you're up six points today in the session. But uh, if you're looking for insurance of any degree, not too bad getting a 1931 handle in the S&Ps, considering what has happened this week so far. And I'll leave it at that. Dow, only major index in the red right now, negative by 35 points. The Dow has been quite an acceleration to the upside. I mean, you look it up. I just said that the market's back to basically December 22nd prices for the S&P, while the Dow's still about 700 points above that level. So you see the rotation that played out. And then you look at the NASDAQ 100, right? And you're talking about being uh, 400 points below. So comparing where we are to December 22nd, it's an arbitrary day. But you traded higher and then you traded lower. You have the S&Ps basically at that price level. You have the Dow trading 600 points above that price level, and you have the NASDAQ 100 
trading about 400 points below that level. The divergence, the rotation, you can't deny it, folks. You jump over to some of the companies. Zoom shares getting a little bit of a pop today, a reprieve from the pain they have played out. We'll jump around to some of those growth companies. We'll take a look at Roku as well when we come back. Stay tuned, folks. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Well, welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up by eight. We got all the markets in the green, just like that. NASDAQ 100 up 40, the Dow up six. Russell leading the way up more than half a percent at 22.14. We jump over to some of those growth companies. I was talking about Roku in particular. Boy, it just does not stop. This stock, it's already six bucks off the low that it made on the open, but you're still down 3.8% on Roku. This is quite a slide, folks. You back it up to October and you were trading at 350. You back it up to August and you were trading at 490. We put Roku on a weekly. You see that double top man and pretty remarkable you back it up to 2019 and roku was trading at 176 we traded down to 180 today you almost give back uh a, what is that that's almost two years yeah that's more than two years i had to recalibrate my brain again to 2022 more than two years of price action on a company like roku uh especially in light of what has happened to our watching experiences in terms of the expansion of streaming, etc. All right, one more article I wanted to go over here. Uh, actually came out yesterday, but I was reading this one last night. Interesting. Goldman Sachs sees new conundrum capping Treasury yields surge. So bond buyers face a new conundrum. This is Goldman putting this out, where Treasury yields will stay low, even as the Fed hikes rates 
Despite the surge that we've just seen in yields going on this week, the investment bank expects the bond market to be reluctant to lift the terminal rate during the coming tightening cycle. <coughs> Excuse me. So while raising its year-end forecast for the two-year yield, it calls for longer-dated yields stand. Um, they're looking for the five-year note to end this year at 1.8, the 10-year at 2, and the 30-year at 2.25. Uh, two possible explanations, a widely prevalent low terminal rate view or the price signal is distort distorted by supply demand imbalance. Uh, foreign demand for U.S. Treasuries remains high. And one of the things they talk about here in recent years, large institutional investors, including pension funds and insurers, have also been buyers of the 30 year treasuries whenever they rise above 2 percent. We have a zero interest rate environment in many parts of the world. So you got the U.S. competing with that. And man, this market. Watch out, folks. I can't wait to see what Mr. Basil Chapman's going to say coming up with the Tiger Technicians Hour. He'll be live up next. We got all the markets in the green. S&P's up by 10. NASDAQ up by 46. Stay tuned, folks. Live programming all Friday at TFNN. Thanks so much for starting your day with me. Stay tuned. Basil's up now.